Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And of course, if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Now we have a special, special guest today and a special coupon for you. Right. Our special guest today is Alex Mashinsky, the CEO of Celsius. Alex, welcome to the show. Hi, Bill. How's it going? It's going good. We're happy to have you. All right. So let's start off with a bit of a surprise for you. So we have got, we have got for you a coupon, right? With Celsius collaboration and token metrics. Right. If you use the promo code Celsius 40, you can use this promo code to get 40% off any token metrics plan. Terms and conditions apply. Now, if you're over on Celsius or if you're thinking about Celsius or want to get into DeFi now that no one likes DeFi, right? <laughs> Contrarian thinking, you can use promo code token metrics, one word and get $50 worth of BTC on Celsius. All right. So that's where we are, right? Celsius 40 for 40% 40 off token metrics and token metrics on Celsius to get $50 in BTC. All right, Alex, we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, let's start out with a brief summary for our audience. So there was a problem with Terra and Luna as you've heard, I'm sorry, Terra Luna and UST. And now the world is looking for someone to blame, right? First it was hedge funds and now uh, Bloomberg News and crypto Twitter have circled around to you using a Nansen report about a Celsius based wallet. So what I wanna do is let me just turn, turn it over to you. I mean, you know, is there any truth to what Bloomberg is saying? you know, is, you know, are you currently experiencing difficulties and liquidity difficulties at Celsius? Please tell us your version of the story. Well, first we, we had nothing to do with, uh, uh, the Terra Luna, uh, loans or, uh, all of the shenanigans that were going on there with, with people, uh, uh, either giving them loans or uh, buying USD from them or anything like that. So I know, uh, Doc one published that he's talking, he was talking to a bunch of firms and he mentioned our firm, but we've never transacted or done anything with the Dow or had anything to do with it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, um, publicly stated many times on our Twitter and, and other places that, uh, um, you know, we did not uh, create this or cause this or benefited from it. So there's no, there's no, we were not on the other side of the trade or or try to somehow benefit from this. We, we obviously uh, uh, have Terra Luna listed on the Celsius network. So, so if you have USD or Luna, and uh, uh, those assets were with Celsius at the time, and those assets and others were deployed in many different CFI and DeFi pools. I know you 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 jokingly saying that uh, no one likes DeFi, but uh, most of our assets are not in DeFi. Most of our assets or our clients' assets are. Uh, um, basically in other uh, types of, uh, for example, we issue margin loans to customers and do other things that have nothing to do with DeFi or Luna or USD. So uh, also this uh, Nansen report is, is a 20 something year old kid who did online analysis and came to a conclusion. Many people don't agree with it. Most people today uh, blame uh, Luna and UST for what happened because basically uh, they they basically were migrating 
liquidity from the tri pool to the quad pool. And they did, instead of doing it in small chunks, instead of doing it in a responsible way, uh, they basically overdid it. And that's what caused uh, uh, a lot of people to be concerned because while they were transitioning that liquidity, uh, USD depegged, and then other people, not Celsius, Celsius wasn't the first one to withdraw. Other people started withdrawing, Celsius also withdrew, other people withdrew. And, and then the peg came back to almost a dollar, a one to a dollar. So, so the DPEG happened, uh, the second DPEG or the third DPEG happened much, much later and had nothing to do with Celsius activity or anybody else. So it's a shame that uh, somebody like Bloomberg would not dig into the fact and just quote somebody else. And obviously they called us, I think, on a Friday at 3 p.m. and published the article an hour or two later. So, and so we didn't have a chance to respond. And after we responded, I don't think they've added our comments. So and Celsius has no liquidity issues. We have billions of dollars in liquidity and we publish our numbers every week. And if you want to see the numbers, just go to our AMA on YouTube, Celsius Network, and you can see all of our information. There isn't anyone who needs to withdraw, wants to withdraw, that has not received their coins. And we're also getting, obviously, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of inflows as well. And, um, but uh, unfortunately, again, I feel very sad for all the Luna and USD holders. It's not a good situation. And the collapse of that uh, synthetic uh, coin uh, will be used by many different uh, regulators and lawmakers to uh, put a bear hug around the DeFi community. And obviously, that's not a good thing for crypto. All right. Thank you for that. So just a, a clarifying point. So uh, it's not I, I, I misspoke. It's like everyone is worried about DeFi. But clearly, DeFi is going to have a future once the fear trade ends, whenever that is. So can you just tell us, because I want to just move off what you said. What is the difference between like Celsius and what people think of as traditional DeFi? Is, is there a difference? Yeah, so, so Celsius has uh, many, many sources of yield. For example... Uh, we do mining, we, we do margin loans, we, do, we lend to exchanges. None of those functions have anything to do with DeFi, right? So, and those are the majority uh, of the sources of yield, meaning these are sustainable sources of yield because uh, mining uh, of Bitcoin doesn't care if uh, uh, ETH, Ethereum is a 2000 or 4000 or $50, right? Uh, same thing when a, pe when a person takes a loan against their Bitcoin and, and pays their credit card or pays off something else with it, that has nothing to do with DeFi. So people have to understand that there are companies that produce yield through financial activity, economic activity, and they have to understand that most of the functions on DeFi, what, what most people call yield is really inflation. It's just people giving you more tokens that they have in their treasury and you think you're making money because you have more tokens and the token price may be going up, but the total circulating supply is increasing every day, every week, every month. And uh, just like there's inflation for the US dollar, there's inflation for most of these tokens. So people don't understand the companies that are deflationary. For example, Celsius and BNB are deflationary and the companies that are inflationary who are just producing more and more tokens. And we've seen, I mean, what killed, what killed Luna was inflation. They went from a few billion tokens to a few trillion tokens. Interesting. Interesting. I appreciate your perspective on that. Uh, if, I'll just jump in and give, you, give the audience my quick take. So you have something that imitates the US dollar that blows up, right? And everybody's looking for somebody to blame, right? First, it was the big hedge funds, right? And then Bloomberg writes the article about your company. And I'll just put this out there. Don't you think it's funny that something that mimicked the US dollar in the crypto world completely blows up? And the people in charge of the actual US dollar, the Fed and the Treasury have said nothing. That's really interesting to me, right? 
and, and everybody on crypto Twitter is running around looking for somebody to blame. And I'm not sure they're looking in the right place. So speaking in the right place at the right time, you know, I, I did okay in this market on the way down, but clearly this thing that happened over the weekend was a surprise. So one theory about the weekend rally, everyone calls it a relief rally, but what I, what I think it might've been was that everybody who had a liquidate or all the margin calls got liquidated on Friday and then it bounced. I mean, do you think that was true or do you have a perspective of why this thing V bottomed the way it did? Yeah. So I, um, uh published uh, several articles about this on Friday. Uh, if you missed them, you can look, watch Kitco News, the last, my last interview with Kitco News, or uh, go to our YouTube channel, my opening remarks on my AMA. It's Friday, 1 p.m. every uh, Eastern, uh, every Friday. And uh, I predicted there that uh, we will have a bounce right after the expirations. There was 1.8 billion worth of expirations. And I said that uh, we, you know, the stock market rallied Thursday and Friday. The crypto did not, and the only reason it did not is because uh, it was waiting. People were pushing against Bitcoin, pushing it down, Bitcoin, Ethereum, trying to get through this expiration and not pay the longs their uh, uh, yield or their sorry their uh, leverage trades. Right. So, so all those guys got liquidated. And then immediately uh, we flipped from, uh, you know, Bitcoin going down to Bitcoin rocketing uh, during a long uh, holiday weekend. So, so I think uh, this was overdue. We're nine weeks. Uh, we had red candles for nine weeks. Right. And again, this was uh, large players leaning on Bitcoin to make sure that uh, they liquidate all the longs. And now that we finished liquidating all the longs, uh, we will be going higher and accumulating shorts and they'll, they'll, they'll uh, play that game again. That's what they do, go back and forth. And, and unfortunately, again, people don't learn their lesson. They're, they bet against the house and they lose most of the time. I think the statistic is that they're, the people who go on leverage lose close to 90% of the time. Yes, yes, we try, to, we try to keep our listeners and customers right out of the way of these big downdrafts. So let's talk about an intermediate term outlook for crypto, right? In other words, do you think this is over and the next round of say like Fed rate hikes and whatnot is going to affect legacy more than crypto? In other words, is the damage done? Uh, or, you know, is there, is there more to come? Uh, and is, you know, is there a case to like, you know, get your money out of, cryptocurrencies and perhaps park money, say with a, a CFI program pro, protocol like yours, if I have that correct. So it's like, you know, are you in cash? Are, are you in crypto? You know, where do you think you are crystal ballish out a couple months? Well, again, we, obviously we, we don't provide investment advice. It's not our job. Uh, we support 60 different assets. Uh, 14 of them are stable coins. These are things that are either fully backed or over collateralized, not, uh, not like USD. And, and uh, uh, each customer has to make their own decision as far as allocations, like how much do I want to own in crypto? How much do I want to own in, uh, in uh, you know, traditional assets and real estate and bonds and stocks. And how much do I want to keep in cash? I think right now I, I hear a lot of people keeping uh, as high as 20% in cash. And uh, they have that 5 to 10% allocation to crypto. And Celsius does provide a nice yield. Again, you can earn 7.1% uh, if you have any stable coins. If you don't, just again, uh, you can on-ramp with Celsius and with no fees, uh, basically connect to your bank account and, and um, uh, you know, basically have USDC and you can, if you don't, if you don't want USDC, you can swap that with, without any fee to Bitcoin or Ethereum. And then you're just earning yield on that, uh, on that asset, right? Uh, there are some restrictions uh, in the US, uh, overseas, uh, some countries that don't provide the service, but in general, this is available to billions of people. And if you just download the app and try it out, you will uh, have access to something that doesn't liquidate you uh, if you hodl 
uh, does not act against you, doesn't trade against you, and uh, doesn't try to give you leverage or anything like that. Uh, and uh, we always try to act in the best interest of our customers. I'm a big user of the platform myself, so I have a lot of my assets on the platform. And uh, the joke is that I, I built Celsius and then uh, two million people showed up and said, hey, can we get on the bus with you? We want exactly the same benefits. So, uh, so we've been doing this almost uh, for five years. Um, so we're not trying to predict markets. We're not trying to provide financial advice. We are just helping people huddle through the good times and the bad times. And right now uh, it is a uh, crypto winter, right? I mean, I think Bitcoin is down uh, almost 60%. Ethereum is down even more. And the decision that each person has to make is, okay, do I have enough exposure or do I have too much exposure? So if you don't have enough, and I, I always joke, if, you, if you're not sleeping uh, at night, that means you have too much Bitcoin. And if you're sleeping like a baby, that means you don't have enough. So you just got to find that Goldilocks, uh, um, you know, in between to, to keep yourself happy. All right. I have a similar joke, but I actually like yours. I, I like your twist too. So this is probably a great time to bring the coupon back up. Uh, you know, if you're looking... If you're, if you're in Celsius, you're looking to get involved in the market, you like altcoins, or if you're just, you know, a, a listener out there, you can use Celsius 40, right? To get 40% off any token metrics plan, terms and conditions apply. Okay. Or if you want to head on over to Celsius, right? After hearing about the platform, you can use the promo code, all one word, token metrics to get $50 in Bitcoin. All right. So, sir, one, one final question is, I don't know, tell me about morale at Celsius. Tell me, tell us about like, you know, was everyone like, you know, oh my God, you know, the, you know, crypto's going down and now we're on Bloomberg, you know, how did you handle your messaging? Did you have a big oh. weekend circle around with PR? Like, I don't know, just tell us how you handled, tell us how you handled the crisis or the FUD However, well, there, this, there was no crisis. I, I've not seen anyone <laughs> comment on this or believe this analysis. So uh, there was no crisis. There was no emergency meeting. There was no anything. Look, I, I was in Bloomberg, uh, I don't know, a dozen times, uh, both uh, providing commentary and, and uh, expert opinion and all that stuff. Uh, so I've been there many, many times. And uh, this time, again, they, they just didn't do the homework. They did not go and look at other they didn't present okay here there's three ideas or three prevailing uh, uh thoughts about what happened with luna or what what happened here and there so uh, but there look we we again we support 60 something assets we have over 11 billion in assets overall so the luna usd piece is a tiny little piece of celsius it's not it's not like okay half of our assets are luna or something like that you understand so uh, so none of that is relevant to, to Celsius. And uh, uh, like I said, when Celsius withdrew its assets, these were ETH and other assets, um, um, we did not uh, uh, take any major hit. Like it was just a tiny, you know, there were fees, there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, but there was no, it's not, it's not like Celsius had, we, Celsius itself does not own or did not own any Luna or USD. It's not like we were long Luna or short USD or the other way around. Like I said, Celsius did not benefit or uh, uh, take advantage of the situation in any way, uh, shape or form. All right. So do you think a protocol like yours is eventually going to wind up I don't know, an alternative that like legacy fund managers may consider using. In other words, the Fed hiking rates and junk bonds are no good. Like, have you ever gotten an inquiry from a legacy organization or does your corporate strategy account for, you know, a phone call from some big player in legacy who wants to bridge over to you? Does that, does that resonate well, at all we with have, you? Yeah. So we have thousands of corporate uh, users and institutional users. And our business is retail, corporate, and, and institutional. So uh, we've been doing that for several years. We provide liquidity for many markets, just like in traditional market, you have somebody who provides liquidity. That's our job. We provide liquidity in the crypto markets. And if you need uh, 10,000 Bitcoin, 
uh, to borrow because you want to do market making or arbitrage or you want to do some other activity, you come to Celsius. That's where you get it. So uh, you pay us a fee, you pay us yield, and we give most of that to our customers. So it's a very simple business. It's not, uh, there's no, we're not like some uh, secretive uh, hedge fund that runs uh, quantitative trading. We don't do any of that stuff. It's a very simple business. And the, the, the piece that's not simple, that's innovative, is that we give most of the value back to our customers. If you think of Robinhood does the same thing, it sends order flow and liquidity to people like Citadel and others, and they pay, uh, Citadel I think last year paid uh, Robinhood $600 million for liquidity. But none of that went to Robinhood's customers. Robinhood does not issue checks or distributions to its customers for that liquidity. Celsius does. That's exactly what's so special about what we've built. Maybe, maybe we should change our name to Robinhood because uh, you know we are the real Robinhoods of crypto. Right, or maybe change your name to not Robinhood. Right? Not Robin. Uh, not Robinhood. Yes. All right, sir. But again, fair. this look, this fud. <laughs> And this fight about uh, Luna, uh, you know, everybody's piling on to get followers or get uh, whatever, or just publish stuff that's not true, just because they know that this is a hot topic, because people have a lot of pain, they lost a lot of money. And these people who are writing lies and, and are, are basically uh, uh, misleading the community are preying on the fears and the pain of the crypto community. They're, they're basically taking advantage of people's uh, losses and fears and, and, and their, their agony uh, just to promote themselves and to advance themselves. And it's just disgusting to see that uh, uh, during these hard times where a lot of people lost their life savings or struggling to uh, maintain their savings. And again, we, we, are, we came to this industry to build the future of finance and I'm just very disappointed to see so many people who are here just to take advantage of others uh, charging them fees or, or, or misrepresenting information or trying to sell them stuff. And, and that's really, uh, you know, again, I'm calling on the community to realize who is here acting in your best interest, who is here trying to help you, and who is here trying to take advantage of you. All right. Well, uh... Certainly, Token Metrics is here to help all of our all of our readers, listeners, and customers. Uh, and I'm glad to hear that you share in that sentiment. You know, customer centric. Every firm, as you noted with Robinhood, is not always customer centric. So, sir, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. It's been a pleasure to hear your perspective. Uh, I wish you all the best. Is there any final words you've got out there for 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 the viewers? Yeah, so look, we, we went through, uh, this is my, I think, fifth uh, crypto winter. And uh, one thing we've learned is that uh, every time there's a drawdown, uh, usually crypto comes back uh, and it, it has higher highs and higher lows, right? So, so if it's your first winter and you're frustrated and you're beating yourself in the head because you think you bought it too high and you're thinking you should be selling right now, uh, there are lots of strong hands praying, waiting for you to dump your Bitcoin, Ethereum or other assets. Um, and, and uh, you know, if you did that in the last winter when Bitcoin went from 20,000 to 3,500, uh, then imagine how you're going to feel when you see it going to 60,000, right? And, then, and you're saying to yourself, gosh, what did I do? I sold at 4,000 because I was worried about the end of the world coming during Corona or doing something else. So now uh, is the time to hodl. It's easier to hodl when you're getting uh, paid every week. That's what Celsius does. And, and uh, we invite you to become part of the Celsius community and part, part, part of the Coinmetrics community, which all trying to educate you and help you guys uh, make it through the bear markets and uh, basically benefit from the bull markets. All right, sir. It's been, it's been a great conversation. I appreciate you having us on the I, I appreciate you coming on the show and we look forward to you know talking to you in the future. Thanks for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Celsius CEO's 
take on what's happening out there, which is a Bloomberg article. Let, let me see if I can bring it up just to like clarify what everybody's pumped up about out there. So let's do a little bit of crypto news. So just, just, just for clarity, here's the Celsius token, right? We drew 46 cents as support and it bounced. So anything can bounce once. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, there, there are a couple of pretty not nice tweets. Let me see if I can bring up the Bloomberg article right that you know I, and i and i actually know the reporter like we you know it's not like we're we're buddies but i have talked to crypto reporters in the past and you know it's a tough business right they have to look at something that they may not necessarily be experts on right i mean nobody can know everything about crypto and reporters what do they know about well they know about writing right? They know about writing. So if there's a hot topic and their editor says, you know, do a story, they're going to do a story, right? And then they're going to get a quote from the best reputable source they can. So this is the Bloomberg article, just so you know, so I can show it, right? Terra stablecoin wo woes, right? Partly, partly to do with Celsius, according to Bloomberg, right? So let's, you know, now that I've, I've showed that, I just wanted to make sure for sourcing reasons long-term that I showed the Bloomberg article. So let's head over to my PowerPoint and start, you know, start your market update, which will also have, you know, additional Celsius related material. Okay, so the obvious question is, now what? I thought there was going to be a decline that started Memorial Day night in the U.S. The market seemed to have other ideas, right? So now what do we do? Now, just to conclude the, the marketing, Celsius 40 to get 40% off a token metrics plan. So if you're a believer that, the, that it's over and that it's time to get long or that you're looking for those small cap gems, right? That I talked about that you need to find when the market's going lower, you got 40% off token metrics with Celsius 40, C-E-L-S-I-U-S 40, right? And then if you want to get on Celsius, right? You get $50 of BTC with the coupon code token metrics, one word. All right, so here's the Bloomberg article which I, I showed you on the internet, right? Now, here's what I highlighted. So first of all, they got their information from, from Nansen, right? The CEO of Celsius, you know, he had his opinion on that analyst. You know, I respect everybody's work. Uh, you know, Celsius, according to this, according to Nansen, or according to what Bloomberg concluded from Nansen was that Celsius was also a quote, a close counterparty that has sent and received funds from another wallet whose activities led to the depegging, according to Nancy. All right. Uh, and then there's another thing down here where Celsius pulled 500 million of funds, which, you know, the CEO told you he pulled funds. Now, as I've said on the show, you know, you don't always want to believe the first thing you hear. Okay. Uh, Celsius, their Twitter basically came out and said, you know, we engaged in risk management, obviously, right? All user funds are safe, according to Celsius, and they're open for business as usual. So, you know, Nansen, Bloomberg, sky's falling, Celsius, everything is okay. You can watch what the CEO said and make the decision for yourself. Now, as we go to the Celsius chart, one final word before I dive into the chat and the market update is this. This guy was right. The whole market is trying to find a scapegoat, right? And it's really funny. In the world of blockchain, where everybody should be able to track everybody, nobody really knows 
who took advantage of the known vulnerability in Luna and UST? Our guys, I mean, we had published. Here's the case for Luna, and here's what happens if it goes bad. So everybody knew what bad things could happen with Luna. And the question is, well, if they're trying to find a scapegoat and none of the stories stick, then who's responsible? Well, who doesn't like U.S. stable coins, U.S. dollar stable coins? Can you think of anybody who might not like that? How about Uncle Sam? And you're like, Bill, come on. That's not true. That can't be right. All right, maybe. But let me ask you this. Can you find any proof that when the Fed prints money, it winds up in the stock market? In other words, everyone knows that the Fed uses the printing press to levitate risk assets. But can you actually go find the trail? I saw one article on Zero Hedge that said Rabobank figured it out. But does anyone actually know how that works? No, they don't. So if Uncle Sam wants stocks up, stocks, they're going up. And if Uncle Sam doesn't like stable coins or only likes certain types of stable coins, guess what? Right? Now, they're blaming Alex Mashinsky. You know, I, I'm not, I just asked the questions, right? Great show. Great to have his perspective. But, you know, I would invoke something from the intelligence community. Things are not always as they seem. Sometimes things seem cut and dry. Sometimes the media reports things. But frequently the truth lies elsewhere. So I'm not taking one side or the other, just using my experience in markets, right? So stay tuned to this channel for all the details about what's up with this market. All right, let's go, let's go to, let's go to the chat. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. So Baby Whale says the banks work for the government and Bloomberg is the government. Okay, interesting. All right. Driftless. All right. There is a huge difference across exchanges and they can make a real impact. Okay. I don't know why Celsius is not available in the U.S. Okay. Bob Marr says, why are people even longer? That's a good question, right? People wanted to be levered long, I guess, because they thought that things were really going to go up, particularly off the ETH merge, right? Sheepdog Army is here. Welcome. Tyson is like, this is a fake out. I don't know. I will get to that. So we have Belgium, okay? Soli Soul says, don't poke the bear, right? Poland is in the house, right? So is London, Alabama. Welcome to the show, okay? Now, Matty J says, is the crash still on the table or is it to be determined? Let's get to that. So obviously... You know, whatever downside was supposed to occur Monday night in retrospect occurred before the weekend. And if you go back and watch the video, right, Mr. Mashinsky told you why, right? He had this whole theory about options expiration and the guy was right on the money. So now what do you want to do? Let's go to Bitcoin. So 31,600 was support. I have resistance at 32,900. I also have resistance around 32,300 in my GAN work. So I don't know. It looks like whatever squeeze they were going to do, they may have done, right? Everybody walked in this morning and go, everyone's all emotion, right? Everyone's all effed up, right? A lot of people sold the bottom. I got some hate mail on that. I get it, right? I was looking for something to accelerate Monday night. Not, that didn't happen. So everyone came in this morning. They're all frustrated. They got short. Then they got short. Then they got pushed out. So one thing I will tell you is if you don't know what to do or if you feel like you're acting and you're, you're like upset when you're doing it, don't do it. Like we can look at the charts today and figure out the new plan. Okay. So here's the new plan. Let's go back to bear market 101. 
beware the failed rally, okay? I don't see a failed rally yet. And until I do, I'm not going to scream, oh my God. Like I want to see it go all the way up and just like get completely rejected. Okay. Now let's talk about Avalanche. There is a technical level at 26. So if, if, if we're above 26, then maybe you could see 27 or 28, possibly 30 if they want to take it up. If you don't see it above 26, that's a cue to watch for what? The failed rally. Salon in the level is 45.32. Okay, stocks. So clearly after one week housing number, the Fed is going to back off inflation, right? Now equities, what are called the internals, they were oversold. So I've talked about ARK, the altcoins of the stock market. I mean, they went back to where they were in March of 2020. So I didn't say much about the relief rally in stocks. I, I get it. The equity market loves, you know, loves the hope trade. So let them do it. They may continue to do it for the rest of June. Okay. Right. 4110 is support in S and P. And I think if it's below that, then you have to ask yourself, has this rally played itself out? In other words, if there's going to be a down move in crypto, you're going to get a you're going to get a failed rally in stocks and crypto, and then they're both going to go. That's scenario one. Scenario two is that everyone's going to get chopped up and lose money for like ten days, and then the decline could happen after that. Scenario three is that this thing just chops wildly until the fourth of July. So you have a very emotional market, right? Like my scenarios did not include a reversal of that kind. Frequently when people get emotional, they stay emotional. You want to stay out of that. You want to stay out of it, right? Bear markets are hard. Like somebody was giving me a hard time, not a hard time, but they were asking me, hey, Bill, how come you don't tell us to get short? Well, look no further than this weekend's price action right? Like you get defensive, you get in cash, then you can make decisions as to how you want to allocate money. But frequently people who are trying to get short, you can make money doing it if you're a professional, but you can also get caught like this weekend, right? All right, let's talk about levels. Support in ETH is 1864. Okay. 1967 is a level that ETH may hang around. I personally think ETH is okay if it stays above 1930. If ETH goes below 1930, that's a big game point. Then I don't like it, right? If you saw ETH hit 1930 and then take out 1864, it's on to the downside. Now, conversely, if that doesn't happen, you have to be careful that if ETH is above 1930, that it doesn't turn around and go to like, 21 or 2200. Now, that doesn't mean go FOMO in with the rent money and get long. What it means is sometimes, like, particularly in bear markets, you have to be patient. You have to be patient, right? Like, oh my God, is it going up? I got to get long. Oh my God, I missed the whole rally. Oh, it's up 25%. Okay, let's short it on leverage. If you feel like that's what's going on, if that's your internal trading voice, I would caution you on that, right? The best bear market traders in the world wait until bulls are FOMOing in and they can't love it and it's a reversal and it's going up and it's all over. That could be 2,200 in ETH. We don't know yet. Just giving you the levels, okay? 1980 is a good support point in ETH. I don't want to over level you. All right. So 32,300 is another pivot in Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin is below that, perhaps it's a range, just quiet. Bitcoin's above that, then, you know, they're probing. Like, like the CEO of Celsius said, 
you know, they got everybody out on the downside and now they're looking for, they're looking for the short sellers stops. All right. This was the scenario from 2014 where there was a decline starting around Memorial Day. Okay. So there was a lot of chop and the jury's still out. So let's see what happens this week. What are we looking for though? We're looking for a failed rally. Now, these are the best levels, I think. Okay, we, we got these results late Friday. We had a, I had an idea. I called our quant guys and I said, you know what? Let's go to a log scale. So instead of looking at price, just price, we're going to take the, you know, the log scale and then look at support and resistances based on AI. So 28K was support. We did discuss that. 33K is resistance. So that's interesting, right? There are a lot of chart points at 32-ish, right? 32,900 we had on one chart. So the AI agrees. But what's really interesting is I think a lot of people thought that they were going to get Bitcoin at 24. It didn't get there. So if it's below 28, it goes to 24. If it's above 28, they have a shot at 33. Now, what I think is interesting is in the bottom hand right-hand corner here. So on the way up, Bitcoin's got resistance everywhere. Every like, you know, two to $3,000, Bitcoin's got all this resistance. But if you look down here, what is down here? There's 28, 24, and 18. So what's the trade? Is the trade to get chopped up now or is it time to take like a step back? So the crystal ball got fogged up. All right. Now what? That's the title of the stream. Now what? Okay. Let's find the level. Let's find good risk reward. Let's not act emotional. Yeah. I was pissed. I'm like, all right, let's look at crypto Monday night. It should be down. It's up 10%. Don't get emotional because I got emotional. I was like, oh, shit. Right? Be cool. 33, 28, 24. I think, you know, longer term, rest of this year, Fed tightening. I don't know. Some of these levels feel like they're going to get tested. But, you know, Mr. Mashinsky thinks differently. So make sure you go back and check that out. Now, Eve, let's talk about it. 1750 was support that held 2042 is resistance. That's probably going to hold. And who knows that may be the range. That may be it. Everyone will sell the top and buy, or sell the bottom and buy the top until further notice. Now that 2200 level is there. That's a big gain point. It shows up on our AI 2261. Can ETH get up there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It, this is this this becomes the fog of bear market war. It's the fog, right? You're like, oh my god. Now what? What you want to start doing is come up with levels and good risk reward. And you don't want to do a trade for the sake of doing a trade. And you definitely don't want to do a trade if you're upset. Because he spoke, I thought, with eloquence, Mister Mashinsky, about you know, the empathy that we all have for people who got hurt in Luna. Now, one final note on ETH. You know, if this thing ever got below 1752, there's two support points. There's 1450, which was the 2014, 2017 high, and there's a thousand. So, you know, okay, well, we could trade it back and forth, but, you know, I look at this and I'm like, all right, Let's see if we can figure out how to sell a rally. Let's actually, let me say that again. Let me see if we can come up with a technical point where we can watch for a failed rally. Solana, okay? There's a technical point at 48 in Solana. Support is at 29, all right? Obviously, there's a lot of room to go lower if something bad happened, you know, or to be intellectually honest, if Solana ever got above 66, there's a lot of room to go up. 
Now, Solana may find itself either in a tight range between 29 and 48, or what is what may happen is it could reject 48 or it could be pinned near 48. Sometimes that happens when people get messed up. Okay, Avalanche. So perhaps we have a range between 23 and 31. Now, this is unbelievable. This log chart, because whatever direction you break out of, 23 or 31, I mean, you're either going to 13 or 52. Now, the trick is going to be how to do the trade, how to do the breakout trade, knowing, as Mr. Mashinsky says, that this is now a stop hunting market. You know, they hunted, they, they, they washed out the bulls, and now they're trying to wash out the bears. All right. So that's the market update. Let's go over a summary before we go into like charts and, you know, some chat. So eight, eight weeks down in a row, market goes up. Not entirely surprising, although not the timing I expected. So now we're all in the same boat. I'm a little effed up. You may be a little effed up. That's okay. If you don't know what to do, tune into the show, but you don't have to do a trade right this second. You don't. What you want to do is find technical points and you want to look at those technical points at who's in charge. Do you have a failed rally? Do you have don't feed the bear? Right? Do you have that? Or... Do you have up and sit? Do you have bull market price action? Do you have up and sit? All right. So I asked Mr. Mashinsky if there's anything that he thought might happen later on in the year, and he seemed to think no. So I may be one of the only guys out there who thinks, you know, this could have another leg. I'm probably not the only guy out there, right? But we want to develop levels and a strategy of what to look for at those levels. So let's just take a look at the market and see where we are. Let me get the screen up. Okay. Okay, so ETH is down, Bitcoin is up. Okay, so there's the structure where Bitcoin may be headed for 32,900. Okay, ETH, I, I think everyone's trying to get shorted. Uh, I don't know that I would do that unless there was a convincing breakdown below 1930. Okay, Avalanche trades terrible, but it's still holding 26. All right, and NEAR was up more, and now it's a little bit lower. Let's just see whether or not near hit a big point or not. Okay. So it looks like 646 might have been it in near. We'll see. Right. All of these things, they kind of have a mind of their own. Okay. Let's head over and look at S&P. Okay, so S&P up on the day, right? They seem to like S&P. Now, dollar index, okay, dollar index was up. Now it's like, we don't know what it's doing. It's doing this wild support around 101.50. So the bullish argument in the dollar, I think still exists. Although it's not scaring crypto, right? Now, dollar yen is pushing up again. So there's definitely a problem out there with the yen. What does that mean for crypto? I don't know. I don't know, but I don't know that I would be in a big hurry to say, oh yeah, the dollar's going lower yet. Okay. Okay, so crude oil... Like, like we were talking about with the media, the media has discovered oil is going up. So the media jumps on it and what happens? Oil turns around and does a failed rally. Okay. So I have support at 115. 
This is U.S. oil. We will see what happens. I do know oil at 125 is crypto negative. Oil lower is crypto positive. Again, when you have a reversal like this, we're just going to have to figure it out. Just going to have to figure it out. All right. All right. Spin says Luna near heading down is a huge sign. All right. I think that's interesting. I think that's very interesting. Okay. Someone wants me to take a look at Ave. All right. So I think the question is when you look at Ave, right? Is there a run on the banks in crypto? Like, you know, DeFi isn't dead, but are people freaked out enough that they want to get their money out no matter what? Now, when you look at this, I'm going to be honest with you. This does not inspire confidence, right? I mean, this is like standard hidden pivot stuff and Ave at 121. Now, this is, this is another point, right? So the counter to what Mr. Mashinsky says is, you know, he may be spot on that the, the Celsius FUD is incorrect. But he may also be right in saying, you know, we're not DeFi. You notice how he perked up on that. It's like, we're not DeFi. So there may still be liquidations to be done inside the DeFi universe. We don't know yet. And I remember from 2008 that you got to be careful of everybody coming on and going, Oh yeah, everything is fine with the system. Like Mr. Mashinsky is about his company and we'll see, we'll see, right? Right. We wish him the best. We don't want, you know, people who are trying to improve crypto to blow up, whether it's CFI, DeFi or anything else. We're in the crypto business. So is everything all right in Ave? Is everything all right with the collateral in these systems? You know what? You'll find out because if there's a failed rally or if this thing turns around and starts breaking support, you'll know. Now, one thing I did discuss, which is interesting about Ave, is that, you know, you have selling, 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 and when they stop selling, what happens? It's like, it's like a balloon. It just floats up because everyone's liquidated. So what happens in Ave at 121 is really going to matter. It's really going to matter, right? Okay. Somebody was asking about, okay, so let's go, let's go to, uh, okay. So let's go to the DeMarc work in Bitcoin. So you got a 13 top here on the 90 minute chart. So, you know, 32,000 and change, I think is resistance in Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin, people think they're safe and I disagree. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Like this could rally to 35. That's fine. People think they're safe in Bitcoin. I disagree. I don't think you're safe anywhere until, you know, you have kind of a, confirmed bottom. And the only way to get a confirmed bottom really is to get the fed to back off. So let's take a look at ETH 90 minute. All right. So ETH is hugging a support point right around 1967. So you may get one more rally for the 13 top, but ETH may be pinned at 1967. Pins do happen after incredible volatility. Again, we'll see.
Okay, let me let me stop there for just one second. Okay, I'm going to token metrics here. And I'm going to see what our AI is picking up on for, say, today's trade. So let's go to Kraken. So if you're new and you're just joining us, welcome. So let's take a look at what token metrics, our website. So what we do is we use AI to rank cryptos. And then we use financial mathematics to put them in like groupings and portfolios. So for the Kraken daily index. So if you're like, all right, I don't know what to do. Like I woke up this morning and I'm like, shit, what am I going to do? Well, the first thing I do is go to these indices and I go, okay, let's figure out what the AI likes. Let's just see what they like. Right? So the AI wants to sit in Bitcoin and Monero. So it's picking up on, you know, Bitcoin never really went down and Monero's done nothing but go up. So the AI is like, all right, I'll ride this trend and I'll stay out of harm's way. Now, again, my human opinion on Bitcoin is out three, four months. People need to recompute if they're safe, but you know, that's, that's analyst nerd stuff. If you want to trade or get long, or participate, right? Like crypto.com is looking at Bitcoin, Alluvium, and wrapped Bitcoin. So crypto.com has still got like 45% allocation to Bitcoin. Why? Because it didn't go down. Right? So, you know, I think these things are interesting. I think the other thing that's really interesting is to watch where the volume is. So we got this really neat gizmo, right? Which I'm getting, I, I'm warming up to more every day. So we have origin protocol, waves, right? Celsius, obviously. Near protocol, the volume was big there. Very big, in fact. Okay. So a lot of volume, I think, was moving in, you know, probably... Players who wanted to be like, oh, you know, I'm not going to sit around and wait for near. I know our guys like near. So if you want to see like what they're unloading on volume, this is a good thing, right? This is a great new tool. Like Axie Infinity up on volume, right? So not just up, but up on volume. Okay, really interesting stuff there. Okay, so Steve is asking, which layer one do you think will survive the bear market? Okay, that's a great question. So what was the trade last year? The trade last year was everybody was under owned layer ones. <laughs> Nobody owned layer ones. Nobody. Everyone's like, oh yeah, it's ETH and Polkadot. And then it became ETH, Polkadot. Everyone forgot about Polkadot. But all of a sudden it was Solana, Avalanche, right? Then it was near was better than that, right? Cosmos layer zero theme came in vogue at one point. Everybody thought everything was going to kill ETH. Well, that didn't happen. Now, my question about layer ones is this. <laughs> what is the value proposition for a layer one period, right? The DeFi system is under a lot of stress, right? And, you know, the NFT market is highly speculative. So the Fed is hiking rates, highly speculative stocks have gotten killed, highly speculative cryptos have gotten killed. Art and stocks are not correlated, but are NFTs art? And are you in the mood to speculate? Are you going to borrow money to buy? Are you going to get levered to buy NFTs? It's an open question. So if DeFi is struggling and NFT speculating takes a break, 
Where does the buying pressure come from in layer one coins? Right? In other words, if ETH is going to do a merge, which is going to reduce the supply, is everyone going to turn around and go, well, you know, there's near, and Polkadot's a different kind of trade, but did the ETH killers really kill ETH? Personally, I think the only way to kill ETH is to build DeFi on Bitcoin somehow. Or, or have bonds issued in Bitcoin and develop a Bitcoin yield curve. So based on what our analysts are saying, you know, I think it would be ETH, NIR, and Solana. Right? I don't think we need both Solana and Avalanche, so somebody's going to win out there. But the question you need to ask yourself is this. Are last year's outperformers going to survive whatever comes next? Right? In other words, are we really all going to make it? Or do you have to use fundamental analysis to say to yourself, maybe the layer one that beats ETH or the layer one that survives is a small cap? or hasn't even come out yet. Somebody was asking about Algorand. Let's check out Algorand. A lot of suffering people in Algorand. Let's get this up on the screen. Okay, now Baby Whale has an interesting point. COVID is coming back in a major way. You know, you kind of have these oh shit moments as an analyst. So let's do Algorand first. So this is a four hour chart. Algorand's got resistance at 41 cents. So there's a nine top. You don't know where this is a top or a pause in an overall uptrend yet. You don't know. I mean, I don't know that I'd be buying Algorand at resistance. I think if you were a believer, I would just leave it. It looks like it's pinned between 40 or 42 and you go with the breakout. Okay, Cardano. Okay, very, very robust rally in Cardano over the weekend. Okay. Now, as I've been telling you, right? C waves are impossible. Right? So here's Cardano, right? Puke to 35 cents. A, up to 58, right? B, down to 45. C, up to 68. You got to be really careful with stuff like this. It, it's like, oh God, it's going up. It's like, it's just like you see these green candles, all these people suffering in Cardano. You're like, oh my God, it's green. Well, wait a minute. If it's A, B, C, if Ave's running into resistance, let me tell you this point blank. Do not FOMO into this market, right? If you don't know what to do, don't do anything. And even if it continues to go higher, right? Even if it continues to go higher, like, like Mashinsky said, you got to watch out that this is not some kind of gigantic stop fishing exercise. They get everyone stopped out and they drop it. So this is ABC in Cardano, right? And then I'll do COVID after this. Hey, check it, Audius. Sure, you got a lot of unbelievable chart formations here. So the ABC correction has kind of already occurred in Audius. So this was ABC. And this is actually showing the downtrend has resumed. And if it takes out 50 cents, the count will probably shift. So what does that mean? Well, that means I guess if you were long Audius, you can leave it. Like if it's making green candles and the rally is not failing, then just leave it. 
beware the failed rally, or I guess maybe the new slogan is don't get short until you get the failed rally. Don't get short because it looks higher than it did when you were last looking at the market. That's not going to work. That's why everyone loses money in bear markets, right? Everybody misses the short trade and everybody does the short trade on leverage. Sure, it's going lower and then they get your stops. Okay, so BNB, right? Like here was the failed rally May 25th. And honestly, it looks like they're just unwinding last week. So what does this mean? Well, you know, I guess if they take out 330, it's good. But it could just sit here, right? And there is a case for this corrective action up. I don't know. Being kind of it. It doesn't make me want to run in and buy altcoins when they're up. Like if you had no position, you have no position. If you were long it and you want to ride it until the rally fails, if it fails, okay. Right? Somebody said they lost a lot of money in UST. Sir, believe it or not, as the guy from Celsius said, like legitimately our heart goes out to you. So let me, let me switch gears. Let's go back to ETH. For just a second. Okay, I'm going to go to an eight hour chart of ETH, right? And we'll talk about COVID. So, this down here is the Williams Awesome Oscillator. Now, this oscillator has multiple functions, but if the downtrend is intact, right? There's something very noticeable. So let me label this ETH 8 hour. This will tie in with COVID. So one thing you'll notice about ETH on this chart, the 8 hour chart, is that every time this Williams oscillator got to like even, in other words, when it went from kind of oversold to neutral because it's got some very unique properties. Every time that thing popped up green, it turned around and ETH just avalanche down. That's why I'm looking at the 1930 level on my GAN charts because I never just make a call off one thing. I'm always using multiple things. Okay. So with this oscillator doing what it's doing, this will be the third time that it'll get to neutral. Things happen in threes. So based on this, ETH might sit here for two days and we looked at Ave and we looked at the ABC and Cardano. We looked at resistance in Bitcoin. There's, there's a bearish case. There's a bearish case. You just don't have a failed rally. But, you know, like here, you had the failed rally, right? Like, let me blow it up. You had two failed rallies here. Two of them, right? This was all the way up, pause, collapse. Now, what do you have over here? Well, I don't know. We have massive moonshot, and now we don't know what this is yet. Now, what happens if ETH does not go down? This is the question. Okay, if ETH goes down, that means DeFi players are liquidating. Risk assets are going to have a tough time. We, we know the story. We know the story, right? Now, if ETH does not go down, has the narrative shifted? So I had a doctor's appointment Friday, and here's what the doc says to me. He's like, I want you to go out and get your COVID shot now. Why? Well, because the strains coming in the late fall are going to be totally vaccine resistant. The vaccine companies are working on it, but you know, it's to be determined. So assuming they can figure it out, the next shot that might give you protection is like probably January, February. That's what I'm saying in my mind, right? That means you could have what? Because we've talked about this later in the year, 
You could have Fed tightening, geopolitical events, social disorder around an election, and COVID. I was like, wow, does, does COVID mean the Fed has to like, you know, ease up on the gas and it has to do what it has to do and be done? Because it's kind of, kind of weird that I got the information about COVID and then this market is just mooning. Because I think a, a vaccine resistant virus, you know, the Fed has to probably not do everything it wants to do long term. So if ETH doesn't go down, two conclusions. One, people are just tired and they don't care. They're just tired. Two, there could be some sort of underlying story change. Now, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, I'm a technical analyst. So I always tell you, if you get a signal, if the signal works, great. This signal works, ETH will break 1930 and go right back down where it came from. If this signal doesn't work, there could be a story change out there that we don't know about. So there's something out there and it ain't no man applies both ways. You could have people that get liquidated again. Just because the market went up doesn't mean there's no more problems out there. It doesn't. It's the same thing in 2008. Everyone's like, oh, the market's up. It's over. Yeah, okay. Now, conversely, if there's a narrative change, people may not see it until later. That's why this new strategy to sum it up here is find a level, find a level you like, and check the price action at that level. And don't trade for the sake of trading. You're like, oh my God, I'm underinvested, or oh my God, I'm overinvested, right? Get your portfolio where it is, and I'm taking Mr. Mashinsky's line. The best portfolio strategy is the one that helps you sleep at night. If, you, if you're not sleeping, you got too much risk. If you're sleeping absolutely perfectly, maybe you don't have enough. That's interesting. All right. So what are you going to do? Going to subscribe to this channel. Okay. I'm going to put the coupon up one more time. Okay. Celsius 40 to get 40% off token metrics. So if you're looking for ideas, if you want a day trade, if you're like, okay, I got to participate on the upside, we have indices for that. We can tell you where the volume is, right? If you want to get on Celsius, right? And sort of fade the FUD, it's probably how I should have said it, fade the FUD. Then it's token metrics, one word with the promo code that gets you $50 in Bitcoin. Token metrics, one word, $50 on Bitcoin, Celsius 40 to get you 40% off token metrics. Why? Why should you do that? Well, you got to find the small cap gems. Everyone's asking me what's next. Let's let the AI figure that out. Find what the AI likes and go with that. Because the hunt for small caps is still out there. We have guys filtering through, looking for stuff right? We do altcoin overtime, looking for coins that have moves in the AI grade. Okay. So if you're looking, if you're looking to get involved and also token metrics with Luna helped show you when to get out. Now I'm not going to do the full demo today, but if they're offering you 40% off, take it. All right, folks, that's it for today. I appreciate everybody coming in. We will get requests and altcoin overtime tomorrow, but make sure you tune in and go back and watch the video so you can see what Mr. Mashinsky from Celsius, the CEO, had to say about some of the recent FUD about his company in the market. That's the market update. This is Bill Noble. We will see you tomorrow.